Hey folks, Quill18 here and welcome to probably the final episode of our Unity 3D tutorial on creating custom objects um, such as our roads. Now, I have sorted out the problem, I believe. So, indeed, the on mouse up routine will only execute on an object. You have to have clicked down on that object for the mouse up to respond to it. It doesn't respond if you just release the mouse object on you know any arbitrary object that that object doesn't say oh I got mouse up no no it only responds mouse up if you clicked on it and then later released the mouse button and by default the mouse up will execute no matter where your mouse cursor is the mouse up will trigger um, the exception to that is if you use on mouse up as a button in which case this will only fire if you release the mouse button on the object itself but that's still not what we want so unfortunately what we have to do is over here in our uh, code on our ground to deal with the get mouse button up we have to put in a little bit more logic here so right now we have a check if start node is not null and we have clicked on the ground itself then we will create an end node and then build a road connection between the two we need another check here we need an else if we're still going to do, uh, we still need node start to not be equal to null. Technically, we could have, you know, wrapped this in a higher level if, but let's not stress too much about it. Um, if node start not equals null, and um, click location node, road end. So what we're going to do is we're going to create a new click location function that will do a physics raycast. So this, this just checks ourself. Technically, we could probably optimize this with a little bit more logic, but I'm going to keep it broken out this way. Click location node. The code is going to be exactly the same, but instead of checking to see if we hit our cells, we are going to check to see if the object that we hit is a node, right? And the easiest way for us to do that yeah, there's a few different ways. Uh, we can check the name, because right now all the nodes are just named node. I think I would prefer putting in a tag, though. Let's create a tag called node. Typing, typing skills are totally unnecessary if you're a programmer. Um, and we've created the node. Oh, that's a user layer. I don't want a layer. Although, although, uh, yeah, there's actually good reasons for us to have made it a layer, but let's not worry about it. Let's just make a, a node tag and then go back over here, set this tag to node, because we could do this click location filter and yeah, no, anyway, let's not worry about it. Okay, so now we're doing a collision. Now, if hit info dot, um, the collider that we hit dot tag is equal to node, right, which is what our node is called, or our tag is called, then it'll return the hit location, instead of setting the point to where the hit location actually happened, we're going to set the location to be the position, the root position of the node, because that's at the ground and centered, because we don't want the road to end where we clicked on the node, we don't end you know, on a corner of a node or on the top of a node, we want it to end exactly on the origin. Um, and actually that reminds me that we might make a follow-up video to show people how to make things like roads that go up hills um, and curved roads. I think they'll be, I don't think we'll do it. I think I'll discuss some of the issues in doing it. So all right, I think that will work and then so what's the difference here? Well, the difference is we are no longer creating a node, but other than that, Other than that, it's the same. Now, I can definitely foresee that in the future, instead of um, just using the positions directly. Why is it? I don't think I'm using road end anymore, am I? Oh, to create that, yeah. Um, so this would actually be this. I can actually see this um, returning a node to us. That's probably correct. Let's 
whatever, let's, let's not get ahead of ourselves. And the reason is because at some point we're going to want the nodes to be aware of what roads are connected to them and vice versa, and then you can create all kinds of graphs and whatever. Right now we're just waiting, we're just focusing on the, the visual aspect. So that should, so we'll create this, this is going to create a pair of nodes. We'll create a third node up here. And then I think if we do this, it'll create a road, but no additional nodes. Or it won't work at all. Node start gets set. Node end does not. Why for? Why is that? What? Oops. Has returned false. Why does it return false? I don't know if I have to do game object that name or not, but let's give it a try. the collision is against the cube here as opposed to the base node. So if it has a parent yeah, there's better ways of doing this, but this this will work. I don't like like working as being my only criteria here. I like it to like kind of work well and be vaguely arrogant, uh, um, elegant. Let's get that going. So now we're actually going to check the parent of whatever we clicked on to see if it's a node. Boom! Finally, and we still only have the three nodes, which is a fan. Freaking fantastic! That's exactly what we want. So now these things are properly connecting to the right location. And again, what you're going to want is you know some sort of logic in there to not draw the roads directly, but instead feed it off to having the nodes draw their kind of intersections and then draw the roads from there and so on and so forth. And it's it's just iteration, you know, more and more, you know, adding a little bit more complexity every step, making it look better and better and better. And especially with the intersections, there's going to be a little bit more math to get all the angles right and things like that. But there we are, a series of connected things, four nodes, everything connected to one another. Uh, right now, if we move the nodes, then um, you know the roads wouldn't move or anything like that, right? Because they're, they're not linked in, in that way. But you could easily do something like that, right? Again, once the nodes know what they're connected to, and if something in your game could cause a node to move for some reason, then what you do is you just kind of, I'd probably just regenerate the roads, right? Just delete them and recreate them is probably the simplest way of doing it. Um, it's probably just as efficient as going through and moving the vertices or doing anything like that. So um, that's pretty good. So I will make one more follow-up video where I talk about some of the issues such as um, ground that is not flat and curved roads. Uh, see you then. Bye-bye.